morning, everyone. Before I get started claiming this house, I thought I would talk about my books because we have some new subscribers and they're not aware, I'm sure, that I am a writer. So I was just going to give a little, um, I don't know what you call it, just a little a snippet about the books. This is what started it all. Just a little Southern. It is about my life growing up in a trailer park and raising my kids on a farm and just growing up. And basically it's just my walk, my walk through life. And how that came about was I have, um, I have a couple of books that I've written and they're, you know, one of them is still in the closet. Actually, two of them are still in the closet. But one of them I sent I sent in but um, to a publisher and it got published. But before that, I contacted a publisher and I said, what can I do with short stories like this? And I sent her a short story or two. And then she emailed me back and she said, do you have some more? And I sent her, I don't know, five more, I guess. And she emailed me back and she said, we want everything you have. So that's how my short stories came to be. And as I say, it started with just a little Southern right here. And then the next one I titled just a little more Southern. And if I had known that there was going to be a three, four, five, and six, I would have titled that second one a little something, I don't know, more catchier. My next one in my series was called Pea Patches and Butterbean Fields. Again, it's just my walk through life at different stages of my life. Down this road of peace. Up there around the bend. Those are just each, each decade, each um, section of my life has a different story to tell and these are just short stories you i mean you can just sit down and read one short story or you can read two short stories it's not like you have to um each short story stands alone but this one here is the first book that was a um that was not fiction no it is fiction and um wait a minute is that right Nonfiction is Hmm, am I a writer or what? These are true. These are fiction. But anyway, this little, this little fella on my, the guy, the older guy there, that is my son-in-law. He was dating Rebecca, and I was looking for a uh, person to go on the front of my book cover. And I, my son is a professional photographer, so, you know, free photography. And I, I told him, I said, look, this is what I'm wanting. And, um, and I told my Facebook friends and, and I, I could not find the character, the, the guy character. And I found the, I found the young man, the, um, the child, um, a lady in my Sunday school class, that's her grandchild. But I could not find the main character and my daughter was dating Nathan at the time and I said you know he will be perfect for this cover ask him if he wants to do it and he said yes he agreed to it yes I mean there's no money involved I'll cook him some brownies and some I don't know meat and potatoes or whatever but he did it and later on the after it was published the photographer said you know you need to make that a series and I said Okay, so I told Rebecca, I said, Rebecca, do you mind dating him just a little bit longer? Because I'm going to need to make another book and put him on the cover. But she ended up marrying him, so he's stuck with us now. But now this one is Garden Club Secrets. Now, Garden Club Secrets is just, you know, through social media and through forums, I'm, I met a group of ladies, and now we we had made up names on the forum so nobody knew your identity. And we had a little group, and it was called No Man's Land. And in this little group is just women, and we formed a bond. Didn't know each other, 
never met each other, but we formed a bond. And eventually we all um, decided to um, meet. I mean, years later we decided to meet. So each one of these characters in this book is actually one of my friends. And I would, you know, periodically make little funny stories up, whatever, and put, put them in there and on the social media. And, and then I told him one day, I said, look, I think I think I have a book in my head and I'm gonna use you all as characters. Well, they said, okay. And each character is their personality. Now, it may not be 100% true, totally their character, but the personalities of each of these characters, the things they say, their mindset is true to my friends. Now, I had to have some um, law enforcement in here because the story is like a little mystery. It's my first first little attempt at mystery. And when you think about this book and you think about John Grisham, then you will know I am not John Grisham. I am Vicki Bayless. I am far cry from John Grisham. But it is just a cute little book and there's some laughs in it and there may be a little, um, I don't know, maybe a little tears, but the law in the book are actually real lawmen that I know. Um, the sheriff is real. And I asked all the all these lawmen, I said, look, you want you want to be in my book? And of course they did. I said, you want to keep your name or you want to make up a name? Almost all of them kept their name, including the sheriff. He kept his name. I was like, oh. So, anyway, needless to say, we get, a, we get a, a laugh about this. At least I think they do. Nobody has sued me yet. But anyway, I'll, I'll read a chapter. I'll read the first chapter of this book. <clears throat> and still to this day, you know, we kept the secrets of their, their uh, identities. We, we kept them secret unless they wanted to tell. But nobody yet knows who Maybell Pickett is. And I'm not telling who Maybell Pickett is. Because some of this stuff is true. <clears throat> Chapter 1. Maybell Pickett was known for one thing and one thing only. Gossip. In fact, she was downright good at it. If you wanted to know anything about anybody in the town of Depot, Mississippi, all you needed to do was sit on her front porch and rock a spell. Of course, no one dared mention the word gossip, for that was a sin. And being that Maybell's daddy had been a preacher all those years down at the Methodist Church, you can bet your bottom dollar she knew exactly how to skirt around that sinful word. How that New York City reporter sitting in his office a thousand miles away found out about this little town's number one tattletale was still unknown. I guess it didn't matter at this point in time anyway, for Maybell was already sitting on her front porch, rocking, waiting on him to get out of the car. Since she trusted no one, she watched him suspiciously as he confidently walked up her sidewalk, carrying his little briefcase. Hmm, she said under her breath. She wondered if this young city slicker had the stomach for what she was about to tell him. In her view, from her rocker, he was too sissy looking to handle much of anything she had to say. Don't send a boy to do a man's job, she quoted a past saying from her daddy. But that was neither here nor there, for she had done cash that fancy New York City check he had sent a few weeks earlier. And she wasn't about to give one cent of that donation back either. Are you Maybell Pickett? He asked as his foot reached the bottom step of her front porch. I am, 
she answered. You ready to talk about that day? He had been calling her for weeks, meeting all her demands. At first, she denied knowing anything at all. But she demanded proof. Then she demanded proof that he wasn't one of those scam artists she was always hearing about on the television set. You young people are always scamming the elderly, she told him. Next, she requested money from him, something which he informed her was illegal for a journalist to do. What about a donation to Depot's Methodist Fund? She politely insisted upon to no end. And lastly, when finally satisfied about his true intentions, she refused to speak on the matter over the telephone, afraid someone was recording her words. Hmm. She was still a little unsure about him. You bring enough paper, young man? I did. He opened his shiny leather briefcase to reveal his laptop. Only someone of Maybell's generation would think things of this sort was still done on paper. The day in question had remained a secret for many years, like a dark cloud hanging over the entire town, nearly forgotten memory that would resurface from time to time. Even the FBI could not get any useful information out of these tight-lipped fo local folks. The truth of the matter was hardly anyone knew the details anyway. It was a mystery, all right. The young reporter eagerly handed his new source a faded newspaper. He had stumbled upon the mysterious headline a few years ago while researching another story. This young reporter, eager to make a name for himself, wanted to know every last detail of the day when Depot's garden club, dis garden club disappeared, never to be seen again. Well, she paused for another sip from her glass of sweet tea. I guess we should start at the homecoming parade. Homecoming parade, he questioned. Yeah, that's when I first noticed it, all right. Oh, but Maybelle was so wrong. Or was she? The reporter stayed glued to every word coming out of her mouth. The 85-year-old may have been wrong as all get out when it came to the details of the greatest mystery this town had ever seen, but she was an excellent storyteller for sure. So it's just a little mystery. Again, all of my friends, their characters, their personalities are in this book. And if you know my friends and you read these some of these made-up names, you'll go, oh, that is Beth. Or, oh, that is Mona. Or, oh, that's Lenny. I know Lenny. But there you go. It's, it was just my first attempt at a mystery. And you can get all of my books on Amazon. Uh, you can order them from any local bookstore, like uh, Barnes & Noble, Walmart. You can order it online at Walmart, um, Amazon. And if you do get a book and you like it, please leave a review and tell your friends. And if you don't like it, pretend we never did.